Hi guys, I'm Jessica from deliciousobsessions.com and today I want to show you how I built my own infrared sauna. Uh, but first, before we get into this, I want to do the standard disclaimer that I am not a medical doctor, I'm not a licensed health practitioner. So if you decide that you want to try infrared therapy, you need to consult with your doctor first. It's always best if you can work with a practitioner that's knowledgeable in infrared therapy. It can be a great detoxification uh, tool and support for your health journey, but it's not suitable for everyone. So please consult with your doctor or whoever your practitioner is. Talk to them and see if infrared sauna therapy would be a good fit for you and your own health journey. Hi guys, I want to show you today how I made my own infrared sauna at home. I got the inspiration for this sauna off of Dr. Wilson's website. He actually has blueprints for one infrared sauna, a do-it-yourself infrared sauna on his site. And my husband and I figured out an easier way to do it. His version has you doing a little bit of electrical wiring, which we wanted to kind of bypass. So we actually came up with our own way of doing it that doesn't have you have to do any wiring. But if you're super electrical savvy, then you can definitely do the wiring. It's pretty simple. I'll leave a link to his site down in the video description below so that you guys can check that out if you would prefer to use his method. Uh, but I wanted to show you how I did mine. So everything that I'm showing you today, all of the supplies are going to be available at your local hardware store. I got everything from Lowe's uh, because I price checked and Lowe's seemed to be um, quite a bit cheaper on some of the things uh, than Home Depot was. So all of the materials that I'm going to show you came from Lowe's, but you can shop at whatever hardware store you have, you have in your area. Everything cost a little bit under $100. I think it was right about 90 or 95 bucks for everything that we needed to make this sauna. I'm sure the prices are going to vary depending on what part of the country you live in, but um, you should be able to make it for about $100 or a little bit less. There are a lot of infrared saunas on the market that are already pre-made and some of them are really, really pretty. They're very nicely designed, great craftsmanship, but they can be really expensive. So the ones that I was looking at that I really, really wanted were anywhere between $500 and $900. So that really wasn't an option right now. Someday I'd like to have a really pretty sauna, but for now this is kind of the do-it-yourself option that's going to work for me uh, so that I can still get my sauna time. Also, if you're not familiar with the benefits of infrared saunas, I have a really detailed post on my site as well as a video here on YouTube. And I will make sure that I include links of those down below for you to check out as well. So I'm not going to go into the benefits of infrared saunas in this video. So this is going to be quite a long video probably as I go through all of the instructions because it was kind of a process as we experimented with dimensions and setting it all up. It was really hard to film the entire thing. So I'm actually doing voiceover with photos just so that I can explain everything and be a little bit more concise. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I'm going to show you um, is all the materials that you're going to need for the sauna. So what you're looking at here are two birch plywood boards. I know that there's some controversy over using plywood, so you can use whatever wood you want to. The birch plywood that I got didn't have any strong off-gassing smells to it. Some of the plywood that I've tried in the past has been really strong at off-gassing. Um, I know that they use some glues in it. It's not the perfectly ideal wood to use, but for this, it fit my budget and it was the best that I could do with what I had. So you can use whatever wood you want. You definitely don't have to follow my directions exactly. So little disclaimer there. So this is actually, uh, there are two sheets of birch plywood and the dimensions are 24 inches wide by 36 inches tall. So that's two sheets right there laying on our little table out in the back. Back. And this was actually one large sheet at Lowe's and I just had them cut it in half there before I left, which they will do for no charge, at least at my Lowe's. So you'll need to get two boards, 24 by 36. You can be any kind of wood that you want. Keep in mind that this is going to have to be a portable sauna. So it needs to be something that's relatively light or is not too heavy for you to move in and out of your bathroom or your closet or wherever you're going to be using it. The next thing that you're going to need are um, some studs. And these are actually two by threes that I got at Lowe's and they are cut into some odd dimensions. We figured out the odd dimensions as we were building this. So you're going to need one stud that's cut at 36 inches. You're going to need another one that's cut at 33 inches. You're going to need another one that's cut at 21 inches. And then the last stud needs to be cut at 22.5 inches. 
for the lamps. So we're not actually going to be doing any wiring for this sauna, which is the, the plus of doing it this way over using Dr. Wilson's blueprints. So I am using three of these brooder lights. Now these lights can be found at any hardware store and probably even your uh, like farm supply store as well. They're brooder lamps that are usually used for raising chicks. And then you can also uh, get the bulbs at any hardware store too. So we'll get to that in just a second. So these are three brooder lamps. Each one of these runs about $10 or so at Lowe's. So you need to get three of those and that's going to be uh, your protection for your light source. And what we do actually, instead of wiring them, we actually drill some holes in the board and we stick the, um, you can see the ceramic base of the lamp there and that actually feeds through the hole and it's what holds the, the lamp to the board. So you'll need to grab three of those. You're also gonna need to grab some wood screws. The ones that we got were uh, the just one inch wood screws. The next thing you're gonna need is one of these four outlet boxes. I found this at Lowe's and I spoke to a few people, told them what I was doing. I wanted to make sure that I got something that was gonna be capable of all of the wattage that was gonna be pulled from the lamps. So I talked to a couple of people who were experienced in electrical work and they said that this 14 gauge box would be quite sufficient for uh, protecting your electrical system and all of that for the project. So look for a 14 gauge four outlet box. The next thing you need are these brackets. You're gonna need three of them. And these are actually what holds the back. The way we designed mine is you have a thinner piece of wood, like the thin piece of wood on the back of the frame that slides in and out of these brackets. So if you ever need to get into the box itself, they're not screwed in there or anything. So you can just easily slide the back piece off and get to the inside of it rather than having to undo screws. So you'll need three of these. These brackets are one and a half inches by two inches and I found them over in the decking department. You're gonna need three 250 watts. These are heat lights, but they're infrared bulbs, near infrared bulbs, and you're gonna find these in the, the light bulb section of your hardware store. And these are what's gonna go in your brooder lamps and give you the infrared light. The next thing you're gonna need is this uh, drill set. It's not totally required. You could actually use a chisel or a file or even a huge drill drill bit if you have one but this is how we drilled the hole in the middle you can see underneath it I have a circle so that's essentially where your lamp is going to go and this is what we use to drill the hole so if you have it awesome if not you may have to improvise okay so this is the first step of constructing your infrared sauna so what you need to do before you start on this is place your board on the floor so this is going to be the board where your lamps are attached you want to place this, place this on the floor and you want to measure where you're going to put the lamp because you want the lamps to be shining on your torso area. You don't want the lamp shining on your head. You don't want your brain to heat up. I actually had to make some adjustments when I did this. So what I did was set the board on the floor and I sat in front of it. And then I measured where the lamps would hit on my torso just to ensure that they were not going to be shining on my head. Once you have those measurements, then you're just gonna wanna place your lamps on there. I placed two at the bottom kind of next to one another and then one at the top that kind of hits me directly in the chest. So you can just play with the location. You'll see on the final photo of the sauna kind of how mine were set up. So just play with uh, the measurements and kind of set them up how you want to set them up. So what you see here is step two of setting up your sauna. What you're gonna wanna do is place your frame uh, down on the ground and then you're gonna wanna attach the uh, one of the 24 by 36 inch panels to the frame. So my husband was actually helping me with this. So I was just taking pictures of him doing the attaching. So you can see uh, I left out one of the two by threes right here where you can see how we we're attaching it. So he was just going all the way around the perimeter, per perimeter of the board and making the frame. So go ahead and attach um, your frame to one of your boards and then you'll move on to the next step. So this is just another progression photo showing you how he was setting it up. So this is just a picture of what it looks like once you've attached the one 24 by 36 board to your frame. You'll see down in the lower left corner of this picture, you have that gap, but all three of your cords will fit through that little gap. And that's where they'll feed out and then plug into your little electrical box. So right here, you can see my husband is actually getting ready to drill the holes in the center of the circles that you outlined a couple steps prior. So we drew the circles of where we wanted the lamps to sit. You can very faintly see my pencil marks right there. So he's taking uh, the doorknob drill bit and he's drilling the holes in the very center of the big circles that I drew. That's how we are gonna feed the lamps through and the cords and have them come out the backside. 
And then here is a picture of the holes drilled and from the backside. So what you're seeing here, you will see the back of the lamp coming through each one of those holes. And that hole is just big enough for the base of the lamp to feed through, but it's going to be snug enough that the lamp doesn't fall out. And that's just a version of it sitting up. So you can kind of see what everything looks like. And then also at this point, we have attached the little L bracket uh, to this. So you're going to attach that to three sides. And then that way the back panel will just slide in and out of those little brackets. So if you ever need to get into the box and uh, fix your lamps for any reason, then it's just super easy to slide it off and it's not screwed in there. So when you install these brackets, you want to leave just a little bit of space for your board to fit in so that it's nice and snug. So it's going to depend on the thickness of the plywood or whatever other sheets of wood you're using. You're going to want to measure that and make sure that you put your black your bracket on there appropriately so that you leave just enough room for that, that panel to slide in and be kind of snug in there. So now it's going to be time to get your lamps ready. So a couple of things that you have to do to prep the lamp before you're ready to install it. Uh, you need to actually take off the little bracket clamps. Each lamp is gonna come with a clamp on there, so you're actually gonna just unscrew it. There's little wing, a wing nut and a little screw up at the top right next to the base of the lamp. So you just undo the wing nut, take the, uh, the clamp off, but you don't need the clamp part for the sauna. But you actually will use this little wing nut clamp in the next step. And then here's a picture of it once you've taken it off. So you've got the ceramic base, attached to the lamp and then the cord that comes out of the ceramic base. So here is a picture. All I've done is I've gone to the front of my sauna. I fed the cord through the hole that my husband drilled. Then I pushed the ceramic base carefully. You may have to kind of wiggle it a little bit. You may have to very carefully sand out just a tiny bit in order to get it to fit. You want it to fit in there kind of snug so that it doesn't go anywhere. But I stuck the ceramic base through the board and then I actually attached that small part. Uh, it's not the clamp, but it was the piece that held the clamp onto the lamp that you took off in the previous step. I actually attached that right flush with the board on the ceramic base. So it offers just a little bit of added protection to keep the lamp from potentially sliding out. And then here you can see all three lamps um, and then they're fed out of that small little gap in your frame right there to the side. And then what I did to keep the cords kind of neat and organized is I used some zip ties and I kind of just bunched them together so that I had enough slack to get it plugged into my four outlet box, but then the cords stayed a little bit organized. And then the very last thing that you do is slide on your back piece. So here you can see uh, the back panel is slid into the brackets. So now I can just easily slide that back panel in and out if I ever need to get in there and adjust the lamps for any reason. And then here's just a closer look of how the cords are feeding out of that small little hole down there at the bottom. And then here is the front of the panel with the lamps installed. I haven't installed the bulbs yet, but that's just what the panel looks like from the front with the lamps installed in there. And then here it is, uh, everything's installed, the light bulbs are on, and then each these lamps typically come with these little covers that go on the front. And so there's holes on the side of the lamps where you just stick those little prongs through. This is actually a protector for the bulbs. Uh, it keeps the bulbs from getting hit because those bulbs are pretty delicate. You wanna make sure that you're very careful with them, but it also prevents you from getting burnt if it should tip over or if you should accidentally brush up against it, those bulbs get super, super, super hot. So you wanna make sure you don't ever touch them. You don't ever splash any water or anything cold on them because they will shatter and they can burn you very bad. So you wanna make sure you use the protectors. So that's it. That is how I made my own little infrared saunas. I strongly encourage you to read the post on my site about infrared saunas. It's got a lot of precaution information in there. You don't wanna just jump in and start doing an infrared sauna. I'm using this as part of my detoxification protocols with my mineral balancing that I'm doing. You want to make sure that if you're doing infrared that you're also doing mineral balancing along with it or ensuring that you are replacing anything that you're losing through your sweat. Definitely check out the post, read the precautions, do a little bit of research and see if infrared saunas are right for you. And it's always great if you can work with a practitioner who knows about infrared sauna therapy and they can help tailor your protocols to your own specific need. I am not a doctor. I am not, you know, a certified electrician or anything like this. I just wanted to share my own experience with what I made for myself that fit my budget. So um, I wanted to share that with you guys because I've gotten a lot of questions about it. 
definitely do your own research. Feel free to adjust my plans. Feel free to use the uh, blueprints off of Dr. Wilson's site. I'll have links to all of that down below in the video description. And just be careful because this is, you know, dealing with electricity and dealing with really hot lamps. You just want to use caution and be and be careful and do your research beforehand and, and make sure that this is something that is going to suit your health journey. And let me know what you think. If you build your own infrared sauna, let me know what you think about it. And I'd love to see pictures or videos or plans that you guys did for your own if you do build your own. I know I've got a lot of do-it-yourselfer people out there. So definitely let me know how it goes. And that is it. Let me know if you have any questions and I will talk to you guys again soon. I have been using this um, infrared lamp as part of my detox protocol on the mineral balancing protocol that I'm on. So uh, one of my goals is to help improve my liver function, 